Right, so b b before we uh, start turn four, just a uh, little correction to the damage to Exeter. Um, when she took the second weapons hit, what she should have done, if we go down to the table here, she should have moved up one from a, a state one, critical score one to critical score two, which means a secondary weapon system is destroyed. She's got minus two attack dice and cruise criticals damage rolls get a plus one. So I've added that onto the onto the chart there. It means it's slightly harder for her to repair. You couldn't repair one critical hit a turn. So at the start of turn four, we roll once again for our initiative. So the the Brits roll this time an eight, whereas the Germans roll uh, a nine. And so yet again, the uh, German Kriegsmarine has managed to uh, outfox the Royal Navy. So one British ship has to move first, then the Graf Spee, and then uh, the final two British ships. So we're going to carry on very much in the same vein, and the Exeter is going to move six. And more for the purposes of this demonstration than anything else, um, we're going to have the Graf Spee close a bit to try to deliver, deliver a devastating broadside to the Exeter before she makes her escape. So she is going to go forward a compulsory two. Turn two, uh, sorry, not turn two, turn 45 degrees. In fact, that's a bit more. And then go forward four. So, uh, it's not particularly good tactics. This the best tactic I think for the Germans would be to keep that range open, and it also means that uh, yeah, actually she can go to there, and then because that's her movement, she can then rotate again. And the reason she's done that obviously is to bring that rear turret, that wide turret, into range again. So now we'll go over to the two British cruisers. So we're going to carry on with the cruisers, going to move forward as fast as they possibly can. I've just remembered as well the Graf Spee just cheated then, because she actually moved um, six, and she should have only moved five, so I'll go back and put her back so in. So at the start of the firing phase, you can see that the ranges are closing a bit here, mainly because the Graf Spee decided to uh, pull off a very uh, unusual manoeuvre and actually close the range. But let's see what happens in the firing phase. So once again the Graf Spee is going to try to concentrate fire on the poor old Exeter. And this time we're going to check that rear turret to make sure that it's in arc. That's the uh, area she can't fire. So you see there that yes, I'm pretty sure she is just about in, in arc. Um, it's a bit tricky to hold the template and the camera at the same time. It might not look exactly correctly, but it is. And so that means that first of all the turrets and, uh, and the secondary guns are all going to fire at that range. So we'll just check what effects that are. Okay, so the range is 15 inches to the Exeter. So that means that the turrets are firing with uh, at normal range, which means they hit on four or above. Um, Check if if the uh, Exeter is in her her uh, gets a, a presents a, a broadside to it, and it depends really where you go from. I'm going to go from bridge to bridge. It doesn't actually specify in the rules, so we'll go from bridge. bridge so it's not so that means that she, the uh, the graf spay needs fours and above to hit Ooh, not particularly good two hits that means that each one does two points of damage or two dice worth of damage um, doesn't get plunging fire this time 
doesn't get plunging fire because it's normal range. You only get plunging fire at range at long and extreme range. So that means that they need a three or above to cause damage. And uh, they don't do bad at all. That causes three points of damage, which we'll, we will go and record in a moment. I'll just leave a three dice to remind me. Then she's got three secondary, uh, or light guns, I should say, which are going to open fire as well. So these guns are going to be firing at long range, so they need fives and sixes to hit. There's a six. Um, this is plunging fire for, for a light gun, so that um, damage is going to be anything but a one. However, it's minus one AP, um, so um, that takes it back up to a three. And it doesn't do any. So it's caused three points of damage. So we'll go and put that on. So Exeter goes down and has got three three points left before she becomes crippled. Now all three British ships can return fire. Um, so we'll do the two light cruisers again first. They're at a range of, uh, they're at long range. So they both get, uh, we'll do these separately. So the Achilles gets two dice to start with. She needs a five or a six, but because it's the graph space side on to her, she gets a plus one to that. So she actually needs a four, five or a six to hit. She got one hit and twin linked means she can reroll. Two hits. Um, each one does a one dice worth of damage. Graf's Spear has an armour of 3 plus, um, Achilles is minus 1 for her armour piercing, so that means she needs 4 or above to cause damage, and she's caused 1 point of damage on the Graf's Spear. Ajax, same again, it's 1 hit, 2 hits. Each one does one point of damage, she needs four pluses, and she's got one point from that. So she takes two points of damage, just to the grass bay. And then the Exeter gets four dice. Um, just thinking about the, I doubt very much whether the after it, no. So it gets four dice at long range, fives and sixes, uh, two. Each one of those does one point of damage, uh, no modifications. So she needs, um, actually that was a four then, wasn't it? Yes, a four would have applied as well because it's broadside on. So, um, that's three hits and we're going to do the three damage points now. So the three damage points work out at, she needs three plus for the grass space armor, long range, tips it down to a two, so she needs anything but a one. And of course she gets a one, so that's two more points of damage. So the grass space has taken four points of damage in this turn. At the moment, so we will record the damage to the graph space so far. Turn that down to a five. Now you might be wondering why I'm saying so far, because uh, you'd imagine, and you'd be right in thinking that the light guns on the British ships are out of range, but the Exeter is just within range for a torpedo attack. And I am going to have to fudge the rules here a bit because they don't seem to make sense. The rules for a torpedo attack is the range is 15 inches, and uh, sorry, the range between the Exeter and the Graf Spey is 15 inches. The torpedoes have a range of 16 inches. Um, if you follow the actual wording of the rules, that means they're an extreme range to attack, which means that they would need a six to hit. And then you get another minus two if you're using torpedoes. So that would mean you'd need to roll an eight on a D6. And um, it does explicitly say that sixes aren't 
automatic hits, but I can't see how you could hit anything with a torpedo unless you were at very short range. Um, so I'm going to say that torpedoes don't have range bands, that they, um, they always hit at uh, 16 inches on a 4 plus, but then you take the minus 2 for them being torpedoes. In other words, they need 6s to hit. So with that in mind, you then have to work out how many of the three dice on each side of the ship you're going to use. Since the Ajax has taken her quite a battering, she's going to launch all three torpedoes. They are one-shot torpedoes, so you can't use them again. And they're going to be fired at the Graf Spee. So they need sixes, so they've all missed. So now we go into the end phase. So in the end phase, we'll roll for re repairing damage. So we'll try the Graf Spee. And she rolls a five, so she does repair her damage. So it's five plus four for her crew. It's above an eight. The Exeter rolls a six, so also repairs one level of damage. So we're going to see what that does. So the Graf Spee's propellers are fixed. And the uh, secondary damage on the Exeter is fixed, but she can't, can only repair one level a turn. So that means she's still got the first one on her weapons. And that ends turn four.